Welcome back, it's me Lou. I'm here for another action figure review. Today will be a special video as we showcase the popular Dragon Ball villain Frieza. Alright, so we have three Frieza action figures in front of us. Uh, these two here are from Bandai Namco's Dragon Stars line. Uh, we have Frieza in his first form, Frieza in his fourth form. And this figure here is a much older figure. Um, I thought it'd be fun to take this out. Um, this is a vintage Dragon Ball Frieza figure from the 1990s. Um, this was originally released in Japan under Bandai and then later released in the States uh, under Irwin. Um, I wanted to take this out just so we could kind of see the evolution between a classic Frieza figure and a modern one. Uh, as you can see here, <laughs> the original figure from the 90s doesn't uh, feature a whole lot of articulation. This guy, his tail pretty much moves, and that's it. And his arms, and nothing else. There is no swivel at the waist. His head doesn't move. Oh, his, his feet do move a little bit. Uh, but this is more so to position them, just so the figure could stand. So this is what a Dragon Ball figure was like <laughs> in the 1990s. It was cool that we at least got Dragon Ball figures, but nowadays, you know, we're very, very spoiled uh, with stuff like this. Uh, speaking of stuff like this, uh, let's take a look more closely at Frieza Form 1 and Frieza Form uh, 4. Alright, so let's take a look at this guy first. Uh, this is how we're first introduced to Frieza. Um, he has his crazy uh, sand-like armor with a scouter over his left eye. Uh, his helmet has those protruding horns on the top corners. Uh, his flesh tone is very pink. And it's a really nice looking figure. You know, this is how Frieza looks like when we're first introduced to the character. You know, uh, when I remember in the 90s when I was first introduced to him, he kind of weirded me out because not only did he look so bizarre, but he had that crazy voice. And he was, he, he like epitomized everything that a villain should. You know, this guy was awesome. In terms of Frieza's articulation, um, his head rotates, arms move, uh, they go outward. Uh, he has double jointed elbows, um, articulated wrists, and he does have multiple hand options. And for my figure, I chose the pointer finger and the open palm just so I could get more signature poses. Um, he swivels at the waist. He has an articulated tail um, that's articulated in two points where it connects to the body. You have um, a motion there and then halfway through it's cut allowing it to move like this. Uh, his legs kick up, double jointed knees, and articulated ankles. And the cool thing with this figure is that he comes with an energy sphere which is actually socketed at the bottom right there and you can attach it to his pointer finger and then it looks like he's about to unleash all hell so awesome figure i think it looks fantastic it really captures the, the likeness of uh, frieza when he first debuts in dragon ball z so yeah wonderful wonderful addition to my collection all right, so moving on, we come to this guy over here. We have Frieza in his fourth form. Um, beautiful looking figure. He retains his uh, white and purple color scheme. He kind of has the facial markings on, along the cheeks and the dark lips. Um, in terms of articulation, uh, his head rotates, arms move. They go outward, bicep cut, double jointed elbows, articulated wrists. Uh, much like the first form, he has the articulated tail. And it also split near the top so it can rotate. And articulated hips, knees, and ankles. Alright, so I do have my reservations about this figure. I kind of feel like as, as impressive as it looks, I take issue with how... Um, the joints are a little bit too loose and it gets kind of gappy near here. 
Uh, we've seen this issue before with some of the Vegeta figures. It does allow for a greater range of motion, but at the same time, I kind of feel like you're sacrificing the aesthetic of the figure. You know, it looks too gappy. It's not a very clean look. And on top of that, I kind of feel that over time, uh, because of this, uh, the way the figure is assembled like this, that these joints are going to loosen up over time. And already, they're, they're not that snug to begin with, so, you know, they kind of flop around a little bit, and I can only imagine that over time it'll get worse. Uh, visually, I think it's a beautiful figure, but I just take issue with the gappiness and the assembly of the, um, of the design. Otherwise, it's a great figure, and I kind of feel like you do need this. I think of all of uh, Frieza's looks in the animated series, uh, I think this one's probably the most iconic. His first appearance is definitely the most detailed, and I think it looks beautiful. But overall, I, I do think when you think of Frieza, this is the guy that probably comes to mind. There is another Frieza in the Dragon Stars line. That's the Golden Frieza figure, and I kind of feel like that one kind of corrects all the flaws that this one has. Uh, that one's more solidly put together. The color scheme is absolutely beautiful with the gold and the purple, and it's awesome. Um, so overall, I do dig these figures a lot, and I kind of feel like you really need these in your collection. If you had to choose one, um, you, most likely you might go with this one here, since this is Frieza's more iconic look. Uh, but either way, they're awesome figures and well worth the purchase. Alright, so with that being said, let's wrap this one up. Uh, once again, my name is Lou. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.